In this video, we'll be covering the steps used to create footnotes in Scribus. Footnotes are most commonly seen in scholarly documents and are used to provide references to specific comments, quotations, or summary. You can add footnotes to any document for the purpose of providing supplemental information to specific sections or even words in your publication. We're going to find out how, so let's get started. Welcome to class. We'll start by creating a new document to work with. The first thing we're going to do is open the Note Style Editor so that we can set up our footnotes and endnotes and apply any character or paragraph styles we've created. We can do this from the standard menu by selecting Edit and then Notes Styles. When the window opens, you'll see the settings for the default style. Because the word default is not terribly descriptive, we'll be changing the name of the default style to footnote by editing the value for the new style name property. We'll leave the next item set to footnotes and the following numbering, range, and start number can remain at their default value. We'll be adding a prefix character and the remaining values will keep the same. And then we'll select the apply button. If you work your way back up to the top of the window and select the drop-down, you should now see that the only note style we have is our newly updated footnote. To add a new note style, we'll select the Add New Style button in the top right corner of the window. We'll call this style EndNote and select the EndNotes option below the New Style Name property. We'll set the numbering to lowercase Roman numerals and change the suffix and prefix from parenthesis to square brackets. And we'll leave the remaining values as is. Checking the drop down at the top of the window again, we can see that there are now two styles, footnote and endnote. So now we can select OK to close the window. Now let's take a look at how to add footnotes and endnotes to our document. We'll start by creating a text frame and adding it to our document. If you're like me and could use some assistance lining up frames in your document, you can right click anywhere in the document and select Snap to Guides, which will cause your guides to act like magnets when you drag your frames close. As I'm not incredibly fast at typing, we'll go ahead and insert some auto-generated text for us to use. We can do this by right-clicking on the text frame and selecting Content, and then Sample Text. When the lorem ipsum window appears, we'll set the number of paragraphs to generate to 1, and then select OK. Then, from the Content Control Panel, we can adjust our text properties as needed. Now let's start adding our notes. We can do this by double-clicking on the text frame and setting the text indicator marker where we want our note to appear. Then we can add our note. We can do this from the standard menu by selecting insert, mark, and then foot slash end note. Alternatively, and debatably much easier, you could right click on the text frame and from the context menu select insert mark and then foot slash end note. You will then be prompted to indicate which note style you want to insert so we'll select footnote and then press OK. If you don't have a footnote already, Scribus will create a new text frame and weld it to the bottom of your previously selected frame. And you should now be able to start typing your new note. As you can see, our new footnote has been created and a superscript reference element has been added to the initial text frame content. So let's go ahead and do this one more time. Now we know what it looks like to add a footnote to a single text frame. So what does Scribus do if we have multiple text frames that have been linked together? Let's find out. First we'll create a text frame, and then we'll duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D, and we'll align them using the Align and Distribute panel. Now before we link the two frames, we'll want to be certain they are linked, and we can do this by telling Scribus to display arrows between linked text frames. 
We can do this from the standard menu by selecting View, Text Frames, and then Show Text Chain. Then we'll select our two text frames at the same time, and then using the keyboard shortcut, press N on the keyboard. We should now see an arrow indicating that the text from one frame will flow into the other. Now, just as before, we'll add some auto-generated text to our frames and modify the style. Let's go ahead and insert a new footnote into the frame on the left. Again, we'll select a location among the text content to insert our mark, and then right-click and select Insert Mark, and then Foot slash Endnote. We'll select our footnote style again and start typing. Comparing our previous frames, we can see that our numbering increments remain consistent. Note that our first frame had two footnotes and were numbered 1 and 2. And the second frame had only one footnote, but was numbered 3, indicating that when we add our next footnote, it should be numbered 4. And as you can see, this remains true. Notice from the fourth footnote that at this point each footnote added is in a text frame that is directly bound to the text frame the note mark is in. So what happens when we add an ended note instead of a footnote? Let's try it out. We'll go back up to our first text frame, and just like adding a footnote, we'll select the text content and place the text indicator where we want our mark, right-click and select Insert Mark, and then Foot slash End Note. But this time, we'll select our End Note style and select OK. You should now see that a new frame has been added. And this time, it's not tied to a previous text frame, but instead, it's on the last page in our document. Now, if you haven't set up any paragraph styles for your footnotes and endnotes, you may need to make regular adjustments to your text properties, specifically changing the line spacing from fixed line spacing to automatic or to align to baseline grid so that the text is readable. After doing so, we should now be able to see our new endnote. We can verify that this is the endnote and not a footnote, as it's using the endnote style we previously defined with square brackets and lowercase Roman numerals. Now we'll jump back up to the previous page and insert an endnote into our linked text frame. Again, if you don't have styles set up, you may have to adjust your line spacing property as it will reset itself to the values used in the default paragraph style. Making a quick adjustment again, we can now see all of our endnote text. And one more time for good measure, we'll insert an endnote into our last linked text frame. And as you can see, we have a new entry inserted into the text frame that was created on the last page of our document. In this video, we discussed the steps used to create footnotes and endnotes in Scribus. If this video helped you, or you would like to have us cover a specific topic in Scribus, let us know in the comments section. See you in the next one.